Get ready to match the star. Avery Schreiber, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Kate Jackson, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flash as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Raver. Thank you, thank you. Now, the yes. first amateur will come out and do a little dance there, <laughs> and then we'll ask for a little critique for everybody. There, oh, that's another thing, isn't it? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so am I. <laughs> Are you ready? What do you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we say hello to our two players, Nita Braley and Judy Norton? Nita is our current champion. She has won $2,850. Great. Yes. You look like a lady of substantial means to me. But I'm not. I only have $2,850. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a that's lot of That's what it says on the sign. Yes, but I mean, before you came to us, were you not a lady of substantial means? No, but I'm an Indian. <laughs> really? Muscle means. Really? I'm getting nowhere with this Oklahoma. conversation. <laughs> Well, that's, are you really part Indian from Oklahoma or full Indian? No, what just part. Indian? Part Indian, okay. What kind of Indian? Choctaw. Choctaw, okay. Chippewa. 2850 for you, and uh, for Judy, you've got four matches, and we're right in the middle of a tiebreaker, and you've got one question. You've got to match four celebrities to stay in the game. Five will win your second game. We'll see how that turns out right after we see about this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. You bet. Second half of the tiebreaker. Nita, this is all yours. Listen carefully. The whale said, Long John Silver is a real weirdo. Today I let him ride me, and he stuck his blank in my spout. It's always the same answer on this show, isn't it? <laughs> no, it isn't. You're a creative lady, an interpretive artist. <laughs> All right. All right what? I'm ready if you're ready. I repeat myself again. What did you have in mind? Charles, is your light lit? Yes. Oh, My you're... light's been lit for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nita Braley. Yeah. The whale said, Long John Silver is a real weirdo. Today I let him ride me, and he stuck his blank in my spout. Wooden leg. Wooden leg. <laughs> now, this is the way to start it out. I got his peg leg or his wooden peg leg. Peg leg. That's one for me. Atta boy, Abe. Okay, Brett. I thought it was the dyke story. You know where the little boy put his little thumb in the oh, dike? Oh, put his thumb in the dike, yeah. Right. Knocked out a whale with his little... Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That lady is a veteran of several wars. How can you boo her? <laughs> Charles. Thumb is not a good answer. No, is that what is. you're trying to tell me? That's about it. <laughs> We're up to you, Hi, Charles. Dear. Naturally, I'm perfect with a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Doing okay with a wooden leg, Nita. Now you gotta get two more out of this bunch down here to stay in the game and achieve another tie. Kate? I'm not going to help you. I said he put his spur in his spout. His spur? Well, he, he didn't even have a spur, horse. Kate. All together. No, he didn't have a spur. You've done several shows now. We're gonna fool you before and after and during. Yes. Um, uh, is, this what still, is, the... is this still too ostentatious for a game show? Yes, it is. It's... A little too much. Be that as it may, I would do no leg. Four to three to score. If you match Fanny, we've got another tie. Fanny, it's all up to you. You mean I have the pressure? The pressure is on you. <laughs> Those people that will come up here and hurt my body? Yes. <laughs> Fortunately, I said wooden leg. Wooden leg, another tie. <laughs> now... Naturally, being foresighted people, we are prepared for this emergency, and we go to tiebreaker number two. 
Wipe the slate clean, and the same procedure will prevail. Judy? A again, please. Yes. But I just want to tell you, we ain't got no more tiebreakers. <laughs> At the cannibal wedding, after they toasted the groom, they put blank on him. At the cannibal wedding, after they toasted the groom, they put blank on him. After they toasted the groom. After they toasted the groom, they put oh, blank I, on him. I got that one. Yeah. That's a snack. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. All right. Everybody ready down here? We're waiting for the gourmand on the upper tier. Je suis right. papa. Judy Norton. At the cannibal wedding, after they toasted the groom, they put blank on him. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. <laughs> they put salt and pepper on your toast in the morning? No, that... Salt and pepper is not bad. Let's see if we salt and pepper occurs up here. Good. <laughs> Avery? That's half pepper. Pepper. That's a half wow. match. There you go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I don't know about it. Brett? You know, when you go out to lunch with Fanny Shaw, says, I'll have a, an order of fries, honey, and a double cheeseburger, and don't forget the ketchup. Ketchup. Okay, no match there. Charles? Oh. <laughs> Call it. I'm so frightened, I said salt and pepper. Oh. <laughs> okay. Got a lot of weirdos up here, haven't we? Are you a weirdo? I won't even answer that. I put sauce. Sauce. She's into the sauce. <laughs> Step up from the spur. Yes. <laughs> now, of course, we're strange, you know, English people. We always put butter on our toast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why either, but you are Thank weird, goodness too. you didn't say it. Yeah, you wouldn't have gotten any matches. Toast. Right. Now, Fanny, she's looking for salt and pepper on the groom. <laughs> <laughs> now, all you people that booed my friend Brett shouldn't have, because she knows me, because I would have put ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> so you got two for you, Judy. Now Come let's on, see how Nita does with her tie-breaking question. Here is the other one. When Smokey the Bear got too old to put out forest fires, the forest ranger made a blank out of him. When, when Smokey the Bear got too old to put out forest fires, the forest ranger made a blank out of him. Oh, you're the best, Richard. You're finished. Me. You having trouble with this one? No, no. No? Okay. No, no. Well, why aren't you writing? No. I'm starting. Smokey the Bear got too old to put out forest fires. Forest ranger made a blank out of it. You are having Well, I have one in my mind. Uh, we'll compare notes I a little like bit later. I like my answer. I okay, don't know we're whether it's going to be right. right. Need a <laughs> when Smokey the Bear got too old to put out forest fires, the forest ranger made a blank out of him. A fur coat. A fur coat? <laughs> Do I uh, detect a note of unresolved hostility in that answer? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Doesn't dig bears. Avery? Smokey the Bear says if you're on fire, don't run into the woods. <laughs> A pet. A pet is what I had, Fanny. That was in my mind. Was it? Yeah. Brett, what'd you say? I don't like bears either. I said he made a match out of him. A match? Uh, <laughs> she said a fur coat out of Smokey the Bear. Charles? I think I have a clever, charming answer. He made an ashtray out of him. An ashtray. <laughs> An ashtray. That's that's in keeping with Smokey's function. Of course, naturally. Now we come to Kate Jackson. I've got another stupid one. I said statue. A statue. He bronzed him. Yes, we have All stuffed right. him. Right. You're in the rookies, aren't you? Yes. That would explain the crime rising so rapidly with <laughs> answers. Yes. Statue, spur, and sauce. Yes. <laughs> It's the thing you do with bears. What? You make them into rugs. The bears into a rug. So, Judy wins the game. Not a rug. Okay. Congratulations to you. You got $100. If you stand by for a moment, we're going to say goodbye to Nita Braley. Nina, I'm sorry to see you go. I'm sorry, too, but I had a very good time. That's wonderful. Everyone's splendid. really wonderful. Yeah, we're a good bunch, too. You sure are. Thank you, Nita Braley. And two well, thumbs up. Spinning off, you watch this message if you please. No. Here we are with Judy Norton, who is now going to try her hand at winning over five thousand dollars. You ready, Judy? Yes. Okay. Now we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. 
small blank. The answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. You match the next one, you get $250, and the bottom one gets you $100. Whom do you call on here? Richard, please. Well, it's certainly a small world. Isn't small it? world, yes. You call right on you. All right. Um, Charles. Small Wonder. Small Wonder. That was a Broadway show of 1907. Yes. The Redhead. The Redhead. Small Talk. Small Talk. So you got those three. Small Talk, Small Wonder, and Small World. You want one of those, Judy? Stay with Small World. Small World. You think that's best? All right. We'll find out if that's up there and if so, where. Let's begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Small Talk. That's one Fanny gave you. Okay. That's there. Here is the $250 response. Small world, congratulations, you got the $250. Okay. What do you think's up there under the big one? Small fry. Small fry. Right here. Did you think of that? That's an old song, isn't it? But I guess it's still a phrase, isn't it, that's being used. Okay. Now, Judy, you've got an additional $250. Put you up to $350. You're going to play for 10 times $250 now, or $2,500. You have to match one celebrity exactly head-to-head. -head. I'll take Richard. Okay. I must be in by 10. <laughs> Here it is for $2,500. High school blank. High school blank. High school blank. Okay, he's finished. Now we need a response from you which you think will match his. What do you say to that? High school blank. Two good ones. Graduation. High school graduation. What was your second choice? Drop out. Drop out. Okay. She says high school graduation will match you, Richard. What do you say? I said play. High, high school play. I okay. Had drop out. You had drop out? Does that matter? You did we drop all out. Had drop yes. out up here and down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Judy, you've got your 350. You're gonna meet another player right now. Let's welcome Warren Weinstock. Hello, Warren. Hello, Warren. Warren, you know Judy, right? Now, Warren, please tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I'm a plumber and a baseball umpire, and uh, my favorite hobby is backpacking. Is what? Backpacking. Backpacking. Oh, yeah. Where do you do that? I thought he said Batman. Yes. <laughs> nice guy. Uh, I go up in the high Sierras as much as I can. Yeah. Whenever I can afford the time. You must be in great shape. Would well, you take off your clothes, please? And so is your Batman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, Warren, good luck to you. Let's uh, begin with round one here and ask you to make a selection. B, please. B it is. New game, everybody plays. <laughs> Carol called the police and said, Sergeant, I'm calling from my bathroom. Can you send over a tiny little policeman? The tidy bowl man is blank. I'm tired of the tidy bowl question. I'm tired of the tidy bowl. Now, this is a good one. <laughs> Carol called the police and said, Sergeant, I'm calling from my bathroom. Can you send over a tiny little policeman? A tidy bowl man is... Blank. Send over a tiny little policeman. Tiny, tiny little bowl man is. Oh, I. Oh, I. Got the idea? I have. Sweetheart. Don't worry about a thing. We're all home free. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Making, uh, My friend Angelique says she always loves to hear me on the show. Say, oh, I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> Making. Now, what is the last part of it? Uh, can you send over a tiny little policeman? The tidy bowl man is. Blank. Have you heard of poltergeist? <laughs> you know what a poltergeist is? Yeah. Thing that makes things move mysteriously. <laughs> no one knows what's making it move. It's a three hundred dollar microphone. Richard, stop that. Are you ready, everybody? Come on. Richard, let's go. Okay, Warren. Carol called the police and said, Sergeant, I'm calling from my bathroom. Can you send over a tiny little policeman? The tidy bowl man is drowning. Drowning. Mm. <laughs> he said drowning. I would go for a very small PT boat. Yeah. I had missing. <laughs> Daddy old man is missing. Uh, missing person. Okay. Warren, when Brett wrote her answer, I peeked up here and I looked at it and I said to myself, oh, I said it aloud. That's a rotten answer, Brett. Show Actually, him. what he said was wrong. Uh, I but said what wrong. I say is drowning. Drowning. <laughs> <laughs>
gotcha that time. You got me that. That's a gotcha. Read the end? Yes. Yes, please. Can you send over a tiny little policeman? The tidy bowl man is... Making tiny advances. Making <laughs> tiny advances. That's very good. That's what I thought. Making a pass at me. Send over a cop. Hey, are you a cop? <laughs> You're not? Do you, do you want to know my answer? I'm real anxious to tell you. You are? <laughs> yes, he's drowning. He's drowning! <laughs> That's two for one. What do you offer, Warren? Two weeks in the high Sierras. <laughs> okay. Or drowned and dead. <laughs> drowned and dead. There's three for one. Ho, ho, ho! Boy, I thought that was such a rotten answer when he gave it, and here he's going like 60 with it. Fanny? It is a rotten answer, because if you actually analyze it, if someone were drowning, you wouldn't call a policeman, you'd call a lifeguard, wouldn't you? That's right. <laughs> but, however, if they were drunk and disorderly, you would call a policeman. Oh, right. <laughs> That's it. That's three for him, Judy. Now let's see how you do with yours. Okay. First round question for Judy. Avery Schreiber said, Whoops. It's easy to have gorgeous hair like mine. He has a lovely voice when he speaks, doesn't he? Yeah. Listen to him. He says, just do what I do. Go into the kitchen and stick your head in the blank. And you will have lovely hair like mine. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I see it. That's, and you'll attest it. to that, right? Right. Go into the kitchen and stick your head in the blank. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Charles, are you ready? This okay. is Doc, sleepy, happy, uh, right. and ne'er do well. <laughs> and ne'er do well. Avery Schreiber said, it's easy to have gorgeous hair like mine. Just do what I do. Go into the kitchen, stick your head in the... Mixer. In the mixer. Okay. Is that the way you comb your hair with a mixer? No, with the disposal. No, I do it with the mix master, the mixer. The mixer. There it is. Okay, Brett. No, no, guy. He just puts his little head in the sink and gives himself such a shock right in the disposal. In the disposal. <laughs> that does it, Charles. I said dishwasher. Dishwasher. <laughs> just do what I do. Go into the kitchen, the stick your head in the bad, mixer. Though. She said. What do you say, Kate? In the blender. Blender That's is the that a mixer? Oh, yes, yeah, of course. That's a natural. All right, Richard. The Max Mixter. Or the Mix Max Master. Or no Max trade names, please. Well, I don't know. You know, when a bagel arrived, I thought I'd maybe I'll get a blender. <laughs> All right. Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac. Oh, now I can't find out. You have lovely hair. Mix Master. Mix Master. So, this is a pretty close game here and a rather exciting one because it's four to three at the end of round one. And before we go on to round two, we've got to do a little business with you. Round two coming up. Here we go. Okay, Warren. I'll try A this time. A. Only three people play. Oh, I do. Avery, Charles, and Fanny. Weird <laughs> Willie was lonely, so he decided to call Dial-A-Date. <laughs> when he told them all about his personal taste, they told him to call Dial-A-Blank instead. <laughs> it's difficult for you, it's easy for me. You don't have to answer the question. Weird Willie was lonely, so he decided to call Dial-A-Date. And when he told them all about his personal tastes, they told him to call Dial-A-Blank instead. Yes, Charles has to answer that. Oh, all right. So call Dial-A-Blank instead. All right. What do you Oh, well, I can't help it. Ready? No, not quite. Well, don't you love him? He's always the last oh, one. Right? We don't need to But I'm talking about he does work. all this artistic uh, uh, work. Uh, right. But well, I am ready. an artist. Now we come over here to Warren Weinstock. Weird Willie was lonely, so he decided to call Dial-A-Date. And when he told him all about his personal taste, they told him to call Dial-A-Blank instead. There's only one answer. Dial-A-Prayer. Dial-A-Prayer. <laughs> Avery, you said Dial-A-Prayer. <laughs> Yeah. Is it going to be one of those days again? Yeah. It was Dial a Prayer. Dial a Prayer. Dial a Prayer. Yes. Charles. Warren, what did you say? There could only be what? One answer. Just one answer. You know, answer. you're right, War. Dial a Prayer. <laughs> All right, Warren, you're up to five. I would have said. Fanny's looking at me. For <laughs> I would have said Dial a Whip if no. I. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I call. They're wonderful people. Fanny. You're on. <laughs> dial a prayer. The two of them said dial a dial. prayer. Thanks a lot. Yes. Only one answer. I thought of another one. I, I said dial a weirdo. <laughs> dial a weirdo. 
Okay, your question comes up later. Right now, this is coming your way. Now, the time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things. Uh, I've got to talk about saying goodbye to you and looking forward to seeing both of you next time. We're in the middle of round two, five to four. When we come back, you'll need one to tie and two to win. Okay? Look forward to seeing you next time. It's five to four because I've got to go. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's whatever it is in uh, Eastern and Central. Well, it's, it's different it's times. It's different yeah. times all over Listen, there. Listen, Fanny's got some good news. Fanny, what is your good news? I just uh, finished filming a movie. In, uh, it's called Stay Hungry. It's directed by Bob Rafelson with Jeff Bridges. Well, don't give credit. Tell and us the I'm name. And I'm getting ready to uh, go to uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama, uh, to do an Army training, training film for the WAX called she is. It's in the she bag. She is. Really? I yeah, it and I'm looking joke. forward to it. I'm mm. doing one called What Not to Do in Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye. Look forward to seeing Jackson on The Rookies. Gene Raver, Match Game 75. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for musical chairs next over most of the CBS stations.